There are many moons in the solar system, but none like ours. It exerts an extraordinary influence on planet Earth, keeping our world in balance. This is the story of how the moon has sculpted our planet and shaped its evolution. Without the moon, would we even be here? We take the moon for granted, up there in the night sky, a quarter of a million miles away. But what would happen if the moon was in a different position? Closer or further away? Would Earth be a world transformed? The moon is just a rock in the sky, but it has the power to move enormous amounts of water across our planet. And every day it puts on a show at Loch Etiv on the west coast of Scotland. At high tide, up to 66 million tonnes of seawater is sucked into the loch from the Atlantic Ocean and at low tide, it pours out again. The head of the loch is like a bottleneck. The water is funneled through a narrow channel with a phenomenal brute force. These are the falls of Laura. Kayakers come from across the world to take on the challenge of these waters. And for an hour or two, this becomes one of the wildest, wettest rides in the world. This is what the power of the moon looks like close up. The tides are the most striking evidence of Earth's intimate relationship with the moon. But it's shaped our human experience in many other ways. It became a place we dreamed of visiting. And 40 years ago, 12 men did just that. Transforming the way we felt about our nearest neighbor. It was 1969 and our love affair with the moon was about to take off. This was the age of Apollo. Mad about the moon? The more we know about our lunar neighbour, the more fascinating it becomes. It's just incredible that the moon, which is nearly a quarter of a million miles away from us, is having an effect on Earth. And the most dramatic effect is the tide. And these tides are caused by gravity. Gravity is a great universal force. It keeps us firmly in our place on Earth and keeps the moon in orbit around us. But while the Earth is pulling on the moon, the moon is also pulling on the Earth, tugging at our seas. Gravity is a very powerful force, but you can't see it. It's a force of attraction. Another force of attraction which works in a very similar way is magnetism. I've got a block of metal here, it's on some scales, and it weighs 2 pounds and 14 ounces. And that's Earth's gravity pulling, which gives it that weight. And I can 
put this very strong magnet above it and there's a magnetic force of attraction pulling at the block, making it weigh effectively less. And the numbers are dropping away on the dial. Gravitational attraction works in a very similar way. The gravitational force of the moon causes the water in the oceans to bulge. And as the Earth spins, this bulging produces high and low tides. The size of the tides depends on the distance between the Earth and the moon. If the moon was just a little closer, the tidal bulge would grow. Low tides would be lower. High tides everywhere would be higher. And any low-lying coastline would be flooded. But what if the moon was much closer than it is today? Another rush hour in London. But this evening, as the sun sets, there's a magnificent sight. A huge moon rises, 20 times closer to Earth than normal. This supersized moon exerts a supersized gravitational pull on the Earth. and it's creating a mighty tidal bulge. The waters pour across the British Isles. London is flooded. Hours later, the same tidal bulge hits the east coast of America, and the story is the same. New York is inundated, a city submerged. And it's all the work of the moon. This may seem like the plot of a disaster movie, but take a look into the distant past. Four and a half billion years ago, when the solar system was still very young, the Earth had no moon. It orbited the Sun alone, bombarded by comets and asteroids, like a game of cosmic pinball. Today, Earth's surface shows no scars from this ancient onslaught. But to get a sense of the damage that was done, Dr. Ed Belbruno has come to the Arizona desert, to a mile-wide hole in the ground. The crater we see here, which was hit by an object 150 feet across, would have been child's play by comparison to what happened at that time. Instead of one object hitting, there were a thousand of them, or a million of them. It would be worse than a nuclear war. And some of these trillions of rocks had collected together to create something far more threatening. It was a protoplanet, Thea, and it was on a collision course with Earth. So you would see a very bright object up there, like a star, and, and day by day this would get larger and larger until finally the entire sky would be a gigantic planet looming in on you. Thea hit the young Earth with a glancing blow. Its core fused with the core of the Earth, sending huge amounts of liquid rock into orbit. If you could stand there and see this, you'd see the sky would be lit up. It would be lit up with an orangey glow, which would be all this magma-like hot material all over the sky. And because it's in a fluid state, it's very easy for it to coalesce and form a spherical object, which is going to be the moon. Imagine the scene. The first moonrise over the early Earth.
Our planet had a neighbor. A molten moon in orbit, just 14,000 miles away. This made Earth a very different type of planet. The collision with Thea pulverized the young Earth. It was turned inside out. Metals like iron were released from the planet's core and reset Earth's basic chemistry. Gases like methane, carbon monoxide and hydrogen seeped into Earth's atmosphere. And Earth was transformed. These gases were the stuff of life. And then, all too quickly, we lost interest. We moved on. But the moon is far more important, far more useful than we ever realized. For billions of years, it's gazed down on us, shaping and changing the course of life here on Earth. Quite simply, the moon has been the making of us. Do we really need the moon? Of course we do.